Hey guys, before we start today's video, I'd like to remind everyone about my GoFundMe. I do have some medical bills that I need to pay off within this month, and I have about like around $4,000 worth of bills to pay off. And if I get just about like $2,800 or $3,800, I should be able to pay off at least a majority of it and then pay off the rest through monthly bills. Um, so if you can help me out through that, that would be great. Thank you guys so much. About a week ago, I was given this email by someone named Dark Nasty, which gave me this link to a website. He had told me that this odd website was found whenever someone googled Ghislaine Maxwell's email. Now before we can dive deep into the website itself, let me give you a brief summary of recent and past events involving Ghislaine Maxwell and her former lover Jeffrey Epstein. In July 2019, Jeffrey Epstein, a millionaire financer, was arrested from his home in Manhattan for the crimes of sex trafficking. Aside from him being a man of considerable wealth, this this case against him was much more significant because of who he knew. He had a large connection, a large network, many of which included people who were very, very powerful, such as men like Bill Clinton and Donald Trump. This wasn't even the first time Epstein was arrested for salacious crimes. Back in 2006, Epstein was arrested for sex crimes with underage women. At the time, he didn't really get much of a punishment, just a slap on the wrist. It was just about like 13 months of county jail. You might be wondering how, and well, many believe that it's because of a secret deal that happened between Epstein's lawyers and the people that prosecuted him in the first place. The only reason he even got 13 months in the first place is that, well, part of the bargain was that he needed to plead guilty to two charges. It gets even worse when you consider the fact that it really wasn't that big of a deal to him because he was allowed to leave jail six times a week for 12 hours a day. Cool. Awesome. That's not elitist at all. But these newer allegations, which to be honest were just old allegations coming to light just about 18 years later, could potentially have been a much larger story than the original one. As while there are currently no co-conspirators, many believe that this one had more powerful friends involved helping him out with his sex trafficking charges and his many vile acts of sexual misconduct with underage women. Yet as it stands now, there will be nothing said of Epstein himself, as he reportedly committed suicide while in federal prison as he awaited his trial. After Epstein was found dead in his cell, the conspiracies surrounding his death were rampant, many of which included the Clinton family and how seemingly anybody who ever had wronged the family in the first place or potentially will do something wrong to them were all eventually found dead for some strange reason. Now I really don't want to feed into the conspiracy nuts and all these sorts of weird things, so I, I won't dive deep into that that much, though there is one prominent figure in Epstein's life and that of course being Ghislaine Maxwell, who aside from being his former lover was someone who Epstein considered a very close friend and someone who allegedly helped him during his sex crimes. Currently, her whereabouts are unknown, but due to some of Epstein's documents being now out in the public, one thing stood out, and that was the info on Ghislaine Maxwell. We will be specifically talking about her email, and this was one thing that got people a bit weirded out, as when you Google her email, you'll find this odd website which I was given via email. This website, known as octagon lhohq.infos forward slash exploit nomophobia dot html, Jesus Christ, what a mouthful, was the website given to me by the man who emailed me. The website is hard to describe, and more baffling than the assault of images you're given the first time you visit is the connection this has to Ghislaine Maxwell. When I first saw this website, I didn't really have much to go on, save for the website itself. I didn't really know how to talk about this website, if at all. It, what could it mean? Why does it exist in the first place? And really, after about a day of research, I didn't really find much. So I really thought I was going to make a really quick four to six minute video on this. Lord, I am wrong. As it turns out, there is a lot of things that need to be dug up about this. And honestly, I'm glad I double checked my research because turns out when you do that, you'll find a lot of things you didn't find before. And sometimes that stuff can lead you to a very deep rabbit hole that you can no longer escape. So let's dive deep into this horror and see what souvenirs we can pick up on the way. First, let's start off with the homepage itself. At least I assumed it was the homepage. It's very likely there are pages before this one, but we're starting here because this is where Jelaine's email was found. In fact, there are many emails found on this page, but we'll get to that real quick. 
First, we'll assess what we can immediately see. A young woman, presumably from an old time talkie, dancing around in her very non-monetizer friendly clothes. There are cubes floating around her and two hyperlinks, one that says click here and the other that says don't click here. Again, it's hard to really construe why exactly this is related to Ghislaine Maxwell, and you can certainly theorize a billion different things easily as why this creepy website is connected to her, but honestly, I think it's a bit of a coincidence. See, because in the background of this webpage, there are hundreds of emails, names, and telephone numbers scattered throughout this webpage. It's not just this one, but also the next page as well. They're hard to see, but when you highlight the text, you'll see them very clearly. Some of these names and emails are very familiar I'm sure to all of you, if not the name itself then the email address where it came from, such as the addresses of CNN.com, Fox News, New York Times, NBC, and many many more. It's possible that among the menagerie of emails that Ghislaine Maxwell is among one of them. In fact, I know that she's among these emails because I controlled F on this page and saw her email among them. Suffice to say, I won't tell you what her email is, but trust me, it's there. And before you ask, no, Epstein is not among the emails listed here. Yet, more intriguing is the pages that the hyperlinks lead to. And I will warn you guys that if by chance you happen to visit this website through some sick curiosity of yours, there are many instances of bright colors flashing at a rapid pace, so if you suffer from epilepsy, you might want to reconsider visiting. Also, if you're a wholesome Christian boy or girl, well, this website is definitely not safe for work as it has some sexual content in it. And finally, what you're seeing in this site could potentially be confidential info on real people and not just anybody, but powerful men and women from our government media and economy. So do keep that in mind as we head deep into this website, especially on this one link that says click here. This place is somewhat of a dead end. Aside from the creepy spider and weird looking lady, there is a photo of four people, all of which I am not really familiar with. Much like the previous webpage, there are hundreds, probably even thousands of emails this time around not only just emails, but websites, fax numbers, and names of various people, including very powerful ones such as Hillary and Bill Clinton. Where exactly this person is getting their info is unknown, but I have two theories. One, these are all emails and numbers that were leaked from previous presidential campaigns or just leaked by various sources in general. It's not uncommon to have someone's info leaked online, and it's also not uncommon to have some weird people from the internet keep that info to themselves and share it to the world. It happens countless times and it will continue to happen even now. So this guy must have seen this info dump from somewhere, somewhere on the, the deep web or maybe in WikiLeaks. Or my second theory, which is that it's just a bot that automatically adds public information of people like Clinton's on this web page. There are many instances where there is a phrase auto added towards the end of the page, so I can only assume that this info isn't really a revealing one, but might just be something that you can find on, I don't know, Hillary Clinton's campaign email or or maybe from a publisher from the New York Times's profile page. Who knows? Clicking on the woman, the spider, or even the picture will then lead us to our next page, which I can't show as it's just a bunch of images of sex dolls naked and getting penetrated. So yeah, no. So going back to the home page, when we click on do not click, we'll find something that at first really got me nervous and made me think I might get arrested by the FBI, but in reality, it's probably not that scary. Here, you'll find a list of names. Many might seem unfamiliar, but some are very notable. These names are accompanied by personal information such as addresses, phone numbers, business numbers, affiliations, emails, and all sorts of other stuff. The names listed here are allegedly people connected to Pizzagate, which to summarize is a debunked conspiracy theory involving Hillary Clinton and several other powerful politicians and millionaires alike. The conspiracy alleged that when Hillary Clinton's campaign manager John Podesta was hacked, the emails that were sent back and forth between these people contained coded messages that indicated the restaurant and Democratic officials had an underground human trafficking organization and pedophilic sex ring. The conspiracies ended up being debunked several times, but at the expense of pizza chains such as Comet Ping Pong receiving death threats by crazy alt-right conspiracy theorists. Why pizza places? Well, it's weird, but somehow really famous chain restaurants are also involved with this pedophilic sex ring, which, I mean, just sounds really stupid, but 
whatever. But it's not dumb, because this sort of stuff was incredibly dangerous, especially when you're hogging around these very odd and very serious conspiracy theories to deranged maniacs like this one alt-right guy who just visit a comet ping pong with a rifle and started shooting up the place. It's why we probably shouldn't spread rumors. But hey, who fucking cares? We're still gonna do it anyways. While on the topic of political stuff, one of the most notable names on this list is of course Donald Trump. Yes, the President of the United States' numbers are right here, as is his addresses and affiliates. However, as strange and possibly incriminating as this is, Intellius Premier is a website that gathers public information from local phone books, businesses and other public sources and gathers them up all in one page. So really, it's not like this info is confidential or anything. If you look at the right places, you can find this stuff publicly. It's not like you can call any of these numbers and you'll somehow magically connect directly to Donald Trump. But still, the connection between this and Pizzagate alongside other pages of the website indicate it was created by one very crazy conspiracy nut. As mentioned before, all the names and emails listed on this website are clearly from people of the media or people within the government. So I, I still wouldn't go ahead and just email these and expect nothing. There are definitely some consequences behind these actions that you will do if you call these numbers or if you email these people or visit the address. I, I wouldn't do it just because it's public info doesn't necessarily mean that you should call them or email them it, it, it might not get you directly to donald trump but it could get you directly to the fbi who will just immediately chop down your door and arrest you on the spot so i'm kind of warning you don't don't do that although i think it's fair to assume that while some of these emails probably did come from diff various different hacks and leaks I, I doubt most of them are really that incriminating though if i'm wrong well damn this website is way worse than i thought so since i was only given this website through email i assumed that was the end of it because well there was a dead end when it came to the click here links but then i decided to google it which is where i saw a 4chan thread talking about this exact same website in that thread, there were other parts of the website I hadn't previously seen, such as this page that mentions the MK Ultra experiments many times over, then another page that talks about the concepts of jihad. When you click further, you get a creepy looking page with a French text on top, and when you translate that through Google Translate, it is totally incoherent and really just a huge mess of English text. This may be in part of the fact that while well, Google Translate isn't perfect, but also perhaps because this entire website is just nonsensical in the first place. And honestly, I could go on and on and on about these pages. Most of them, however, are incoherent, and to be honest, most of the text is just crazy nonsensical rant from seemingly a crazy mad raving lunatic who wears a tinfoil hat. There are pages and pages and pages of stuff like this. Most of what you see, however, seem to harken back to very popular scandals and conspiracies, such as Pizzagate and MKUltra, Skull and Bones, Reptilians, and all sorts of nonsense. And again, I could spend hours describing and talking about most of these pages, and that's no exaggeration. Hell, even some of the background text mentions WorldCorp.com, a website that allegedly is connected to sex rings and human trafficking stuff we were just talking about. So there's a ton to dig deep into, but I think what we're all really wondering, aside from the concept that this exists, is who exactly made this website and what exactly is the purpose of this? Because we can get lost in the pages of all these mad ravings, but that doesn't get us anywhere closer to who made it and what the purpose is. In the past, these kinds of websites have gotten the attention of several different YouTubers, and most of the time they're often debunked to be art installations. So what exactly is this? And could it just be another artist making weird shit and posting it online? It's totally plausible, especially when you consider the LHOHQ part of the URL. What do those letters mean? Well, after digging it up, I found this website called Laughing Horses Orifices. And apparently from what I've read online, this website is dedicated to making weird art. Yet even though that's what I've read from other websites, not once have I seen that from this website itself. Laughing Horses Orifices never seems to claim to have art or any sort of uh, purpose behind the website. It's just assumed that this website is just filled with art. So while you might think Laughing Horses Orifices is totally different than the one that 
that I got through my email. No, they're both the same website, just different pages. This entire time, I thought both of them were totally different, but what I was shown was just a very small portion of a website filled with madness. A website that's probably constantly changing and constantly updating, but I'll get to that in a bit. Actually, side note, as I was looking into this website again, just to check over the facts and everything like that, I noticed that there is a part of the website that says contacts, and when you click on it, you actually get to see that there have been many questions asked by other people, mainly all curious as to what the existence of the website means or anything like that. There are many, many pages of troll-like questions, and there's also a lot of websites that are linked that may be harmful to your computer, so I would very much be cautious about that. I'm assuming most of these people came from 4chan or maybe somebody else's YouTube video on Laughing Horses Orifice. So if you're going to come and explore this website, I would be a little bit more respectful than most of these people. I'm sure whoever made this website is totally okay with the troll bait shit, but I would just, you know, not write something down like gas all the Jews, you know? Again, I can't find anything about this website except from other people's claims that it's meant to be artistic. However, what's startling is that this website has been around for a very long time. While some have informed me during my live stream that this website was well known back when Pizzagate was germinating into this huge conspiracy, I've actually found out that this website might be much older than the Pizzagate scandal possibly being around for more than a decade. The first mentioning of this website was from someone in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, posted on blizzhackers.com. This guy was actually just hanging out with some friends one day when they spotted a piece of paper taped on the side of a billboard. On that piece of paper were the letters HQLHO in that order. Nobody was able to decipher what exactly this meant at the time. In fact, I'd argue nobody really knows what it means now. But this was posted back in 2007, and 12 years later, well, I guess we all know that it's just an acronym for Laughing Horses Orifices Headquarters. So as for the question who made Laughing Horses Orifices and whether or not it can be considered art is still up in the air. Some of y'all might even see that this is just an invasion of privacy and not artistic at all, and possibly even dangerous. Yet this website is not the end of it. Someone online from a thread I can no longer access had found this website that had this same kind of imagery. This website was called synth.us, and from what I've read, it was pretty much the same as LHOHQ, just a lot more cryptic and filled with way more hidden messages. As it stands now, the website no longer works. However, whoever owned this website also owned a YouTube channel. And as of this recording, this channel hasn't really uploaded anything in the past two years. Around the same time, I think the Pizzagate scandal was still on people's minds. The videos are very strange as expected, but more interesting than that is this music used by the uploader, who claims the music was made by them. This leads me to believe that the owner of Synth may also be the owner of LHOHQ, as this website also contains music that sounds pretty much identical to what was uploaded. What I find a bit more interesting than that, however, is this one image that was archived from the Wayback Machine from this website. 
This is an image that is allegedly taken from the CIA. And man, allegedly is our favorite word this video, isn't it? It mostly seems like psychobabble, like the kind of things you would see from MKUltra and what that project was supposed to be. Whereas MKUltra was a deep dive into the minds of humans and how to potentially control that, this seems to be a way on how to control it as well. This project also seems to be very, very similar with learning how to control the human mind, but I doubt it's really any anything real or anything that has any sort of weight to it. So I'm not really going to pay attention to it. I just thought it was a little bit interesting. So what exactly is Scent.us? And for that matter, what is Laughing Horses Orifices HQ? Is it really just art that jabs at our political climate? Is it something that makes one of those tinfoiled hat wearing freaks? I mean, this website has been around since 2007, at least, and then I can only imagine that it's been talking politics since the very beginning. And while unfortunately we don't have any screenshots saved by the Wayback Machine on what this website used to look like before the Pizzagate scandal or during the Obama administration, we can pretty much guess what this website probably was back then is what it is today. And you can view it several different ways. Either this is something very harmful or something that is filled with sensitive information run by a madman trying to expose the internet, or it's a website full of art that's satirizing the kind of people that obsess over this info. Maybe this website does belong to a hacker and he's making this info public, humiliating the government. Or perhaps it's just the crazy ravings of a madman that can't be understood. Who's to say? Honestly, I would love to talk more about this website, but I think this has gone on for way too long and really there's not much I can decipher. All these pages are just very crazy to look at and crazy to read. And again, if you're wanting to visit this website, keep in mind that there is a lot of flashing imagery and a ton of porn. So I wouldn't recommend going there during your work hours. I would recommend just going whenever you have your own private time to yourself. But do keep in mind, the information you're gonna read is potentially revealing and horrifying, probably even illegal. You might lose your sanity reading over what you've seen or what you will see going through every single page. Or maybe you'll agree with them. I don't know. Thank you everyone so much for watching. I'll see y'all next time. I love y'all so much. Goodbye.